Hi. So it's the end of the year, November 30, uh, December 31st. A lot of essays are making end of the year videos. I didn't think, I didn't consider making one, but might as well do a year in review at least. Especially since as a European, my New Year's is a couple hours ahead of the Americans that are the largest part of my audience. So, year in review, let's see what happened. Um, I moved house, kind of. I was moved from, I moved from my parents' house to my grandma's house, which was her house for the three months I lived here while she was alive. She sadly passed away back in March, thus <coughs> making the house my uncle's and my mom's house, which kept me safe enough here in terms of having a living space to do stuff. Still was not able to find a job. Uh, I'll hear, I'll hear at the start of next year if one of the jobs took me or not. So I am, I'm hoping that they did. I'm really, really hoping that they decided to take me. But that's skipping ahead. And one of the other big things this year uh, got me a Quest 2, which allows me to produce videos like this. Let's me, let's me use Chill VR and I guess VR Chat if I decide to film there ever, if I figure it out. Use that as a studio. Let's me record nicely in there and bring you all maybe fun, maybe educational stuff of me geeking out. You know, uh, I did I did transfer Metro. That's something I'm proud of. That just kind of popped out of my head and I did not expect it to, uh, to get, you know, more than 10 views. But no, we're, we're averaging like 50 views. Except for the Kanojo ni Naritai one. That one's... That one has not crossed 50 views yet, and it's and it's because of copyright stuff, like a copyright claim on the video for the background music of the of the of the chill cabin world, right? It's like, yeah, you can use this, but it's my copyright, so so that's kind of fucked it up. So I hope you all watch that. And I did the Simmerman video as a little offshoot, as an expression of madness, as you do when you get a nut, nutty idea. You just kind of let it flow out on the paper. And then you make a video about it so people can watch and listen to it and look at a cute pink griff and say all that nonsense. That's not the only thing we're up to this year, though. Um, I finally decided I am finished writing my book, An Ice Cold Case of Isolation. I sent it into one publisher. I have not heard back yet, but the girl, the Dr. Nairi A. Bacallion, who suggested I approach them with it, um, said they are busy that it might take a couple months. And, you know, I sent that back in October. Uh, and it's December, so probably it's going to take them a couple more months, like half a year, hopefully. Hopefully I'll hear about it soon enough. Uh, what else happened this year? What else is of note? Um, not much. Is there anything I can structure this video in? Structure this video with? That's the thing. I don't know how to structure it. Because <laughs> uh, Error, I'm Error, right? Made the top 10 essays list thing. And everybody else is like, yeah, my favorite thing is this year. Our top 10s this year. Thank God for James Stephanie Sterling for their games of the year and shittiest games of the year lists. I do not agree with the scorn take. I understand. I understand where Steph is coming from in terms of scorn. Why why they consider it one of the worst games of the year. It is Eurochank. It's a point and click adventure game with kind of shitty combat that's not very well balanced in 
a horrible little world. And for somebody with a lot of neurodivergencies, I guess, it can be pretty, pretty bad. For me, for me, I loved my time with Scorn. I loved my time with it. Except for the combat, I loved my time with Scorn, with the visuals, with the aesthetic, with the whole atmosphere. I am not much of a horror game player, but I enjoyed that. Actually, one of the few horror games I played was Silent Hill 2. I played that. I have the vaults of that saved. I could just... I could just cut those together and, like, upload those, but that won't be nearly as fun, I think. But it's something I could do, you know? It's something I could definitely do if I wanted to just cut together the VODs and upload them. It's, uh, It's hard to be funny on streams, which I won't be doing much of, uh, starting, starting next month. Uh, I was basically expecting to move out this month to be moved or something uh so now it's the decision is if i get a job in but no if i get that administrative assistant job that i'm hoping for i'll be moving there and like trying to establish myself there and i'll have access to like better internet and complete control over that but also i'll be working so that's you know, I'll have the ability to stream, but not as much time to stream, and even my streams weren't that popular to begin with. Something I have to tell you, though, um, you, none of y'all are, like, telling me to write more, and I feel, I feel kind of sad about that, because writing was one of the big things I used to do, and I haven't written anything except scripts in a while, and I miss it. And I'm the kind of person that needs constant encouragement and praise to keep doing things. I think that's that's one of the reasons why I'm okay with with making shitty videos. It's like I don't have to think as hard as I would if I was writing. I can just shit post verbally. I can just info dump instead of doing a narrative, and that's. Good for me. That's not so good for my actual viewers or watchers, but it's good for me. Hmm. So, that's the year in review. Not much has happened. Uh, I'm still unemployed. I managed to make some videos. I managed to get some cool gadgets. And uh, maybe, maybe, God, I hope so. I'll be able to tell you that I got a job next month. I can tell you that I am currently trying to script and bullshit my way through. Uh, I mean, it's not a massive project, right? I'm not. I'm not an artist in the way LK or Aranok or Error or Jacob or John Surprepatch Wolf. Like, I'm not like any of those people. I am. I'm like the bootleg. I'm closer to a, a Ryan Hollinger in in terms of like video structure, except he's better than me because he talks about horror movies and has a lot of thoughts about them. <laughs> me, I'm shit posting. I'm gonna fucking tell you all about a mid early twentieth century play and how it's similar or not similar, how it relates to, you know, the Blade Runner movies. And then do a surprising twist at the end. That's something I realized because of the name of one of the key robots in the play. Anyways, that's what I'm scripting right now. Literally, as I sat down to make this video, I'm trying to focus and script that. So we will see. We will see how that works. But, but. Before that video is done, I like to say thank you all for following me, for watching me. I mean, I only have 50 subscribers here and like 40 people on my Patreon. More, most of my followers are in Scribble Hub, I'd say, and I haven't posted anything there, which is sad. But I am thankful for every single one of you. I hope, I hope that 
we can double that number, triple it even, that we can get out of the double digits, you know, out of the double digits and into the triple digits. That would be, that would be swell. And then quadruple digits, maybe, maybe, you know. But until that happens, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. Because the, the important thing is that you have fun doing what you're doing, right? So I've been Katie. This has been my end of the year in retrospective video, sitting down and talking. I think I'll make this just a, just a Patreon exclusive. You know, I don't, mm, nah, it'll go up on YouTube, but there won't be much to it. I can promise you that what much. So thanks for being here, for following me, for being with me this whole year, and I will see you in the next video. And I'm leaving this completely unedited, so you're going to see all the quirks of me turning on OBS and such. <laughs>